Hello, this is Troy and welcome to another podcast. So you join me here in central London, just hanging out in the bunker on lockdown. Uh, as before, it's May the 4th. May the 4th be with you, Star Wars Day. And it's a momentous day today because Charisma and Dating Academy, which is my flagship course on charisma, dating, game, getting your bad boy edge on point, differentiating yourself from the herd and all of the the dating tactics and technologies that you need to thrive in the post-lockdown world, which will be coming to us very, very soon across the world, um, is closing today. So it will close this evening at midnight EST. And once the cart has clanged shut, once the doors have shut on the course, you will no longer be able to enrol. So if you're listening to this today, which is May the 4th, 2020, then go to the link below in the description, click on it and go through to the course. You can have a look at the course description and then sign up because you really only have a few hours left to do that. You have uh, probably less than, well, at the time of recording, you have um, probably around 12 hours left uh, in order to sign up for the course. And as I say, after the course closes, you won't be able to join. Now, the cost to enroll on Charisma and Dating Academy is $297 at the moment. And for that, you get 10 hours worth of video lectures with yours truly, myself. Uh, also, all the written text that explains all of the concepts, everything I'm talking about. You also get uh, access to my Infields product. You get three of my books. Uh, plus, you get access to another video course I did called Renegade Playbook, which is a short four-part video course uh, as well. <clears throat> so you get all of that stuff in a nice package. And furthermore, on top of that, you get 10 uh, Zoom webinars as well, interactive webinars led by me, where we'll go through the material uh, in person. I was going to say face-to-face. It's not quite face-to-face because obviously it's on Zoom, but seeing as we kind of do everything on Zoom these days anyway because of uh, uh, restrictions and so on, that's kind of how things are. But listen, it's, it's, it's awesome. I mean, if you've been on to John Modern Life Dating's webinars, or even if you haven't, I can tell you there is huge power to be found in teaching you know, your material. Um, in his case, it's body language stuff. In my case, it's charisma. You know, teaching that material life. Hugely, hugely important. Hugely beneficial. So, you know, it's not just that you get the video course and then you're at home and that's it. And, you know, it's like, see you later, work through it yourself. You also get that tuition as well. So, um, and, and, and as and when this is reopened, and I will re- prob- likely reopen later in the year at some point, um, the price will go up. Okay, so 297 is the lowest cost that you're going to get into the course. So if you are at all interested, and I hope that you are because it is awesome, I can say it is a transformative course. Um, and the initial feedback from students coming back is, is awesome so far. Then take action now because it closes tonight. So as I say, go to the link in the bio or, or rather the description below. Okay. I'll leave that there for now. What I wanted to share with you today is just a bit of a tip, really, um, to help you in terms of your dating, to help you in terms of your game, uh, and also just generally in social situations. Because I think what I'm talking about, and I actually talk about Charisma and Dating Academy as well, more and more these days, is, is just how to have presence, right? How to walk into a social interaction and be able to own it, be able to have presence, and be able to have an influence on the other person that's going to be positive. So they're going to kind of fall into your frame rather than you falling into their frame. And a really, really good way of doing this is to film yourself, is to see yourself on camera, okay? Now, how do I know this? Well, I know this because I've spent the last couple of years uh, making hundreds and hundreds of YouTube videos and filming Charisma and Dating Academy um, in front of a cameraman and filming in fields and things like that. And what has the result of all of that been? Well, the results, I mean, obviously I wasn't doing it in order to 
to get better in social situations. That wasn't the, the intention of it. Um, the reason for doing all of that stuff was and is, of course, to create content, to put content onto my, my YouTube channel, uh, to create content for you guys that's hopefully informative, entertaining, fun, whatever else, okay? So the idea is, um, you know, primarily really to serve an audience, to serve the audience and to create useful, valuable, uh, entertaining content. But there was a, a side effect to it that I hadn't really thought about that I hadn't really expected and what that side effect was and when you come to think of it it's it's pretty obvious really uh, but I didn't think of it beforehand what the side effect was was that I started to be able to see myself of course and to observe the way that I look and the way that I uh, have mannerisms and things when I speak and the way that I emphasize certain points what I do with my hands when I'm making points, all of these different sorts of things. And it is incredibly, incredibly instructive. And by the way, I would also incorporate uh, recording podcasts into that as well. Podcasts are obviously just audio format like this now, and they too are incredibly useful. Why? Because you can listen back to your voice, you can listen back to how your voice sounds, and you can hear when you are using the ums and ahs and uh, uh, ers like I just did then, and different things like that, in order to create space, in order to give yourself time to think what you're going to say next, etc, etc. And also, you know, we just, and you know is one of mine, and people will pick up on this sometimes, I do say you know a lot. Why do I do that? Well, I've got into a bad habit of saying it, I guess. It's just something that I picked up at some point and it forms a kind of, how should I put it? It forms a sort of little break in a sentence that allows me, I guess, to clear my thoughts, to think more clearly about what I want to say next. It just puts a little pause in there. It makes me feel more comfortable. It sort of, I suppose, takes away from saying something as forcibly as I might otherwise have said it, or whatever. Anyway, it's a, it's a bad habit, but it's something that I've picked up on as a result of recording these podcasts. Now, you might say, well, you haven't eliminated it yet, so what's the point? You know, But everything's a work in progress. So I'm not saying that I'm perfect at any of this stuff. Uh, I'm certainly not, but at least I am aware now of many of the faults that I've had. And I believe that I have ironed out a great many faults that I've had previously because of seeing myself on camera and because of recording these podcasts. Not to say that I'm now perfect and there are no faults left. That would be ridiculous to say that. I don't claim that for a second. But it certainly, certainly helps. The other thing I would say is as well, you have to bear in mind there is a difference between recording something on camera or doing a live stream in front of a camera and what you're like when you're much more relaxed in a social setting. Obviously, there's still an element of nerves, I suppose, or camera shyness or whatever that's going to come about as a result of being in front of the camera because it is a, a slightly artificial thing. And even after you do it for a long time, appear in front of a camera, record yourself with the camera, get recorded by other people with the camera. It is kind of artificial. It's not quite the same as being in front of a human being and having an interaction with them. But nevertheless, it is very, very close. And it does give you this incredible opportunity to observe yourself, to hear yourself, to see how you come across to other people outside of yourself. It allows you to step outside of yourself and see yourself approximately as other people are going to see you. And that is really, really powerful. And I've often thought over the years when people come to me and they say, well, how do I get better at conversation skills? How do I get better in an interview situation? How do I get more confident about what I'm saying when I make an approach or whatever? I often think, well, <laughs> if only you were recording a podcast every week, then that would help you a lot because it certainly helped me. Or oh, if only you were recording five videos a week for your YouTube channel, then that would uh, help you immeasurably because that, that has certainly helped me. And of course, 
not everybody is in the position that they're doing this stuff because they don't have a YouTube channel. They're not in that, in that line of work. They're not recording podcasts because why should they? And so it's just not something they do. But they, they miss out on that peripheral advantage of it, which is the advantage that it has for your social uh, skills, for your social life. So all of that being said, why don't you start recording yourself anyway? Because you don't have to publish this stuff, right? You don't have to create a YouTube channel and put out videos of yourself. You don't have to start making a podcast every week. But just the act of doing it is going to teach you so much about yourself that it's not true, okay? So what I recommend is that you start the habit of just recording yourself and and just seeing how it goes. Now, how frequently you do this is up to you, but I would say if you could spend, you know, a couple of minutes every day just making a video of yourself talking, that is gonna stand you in incredibly good stead. So here's an exercise that I would recommend, right? Because here's the thing, when you go into an interaction with somebody, when you go into a conversation, a lot of the time you're gonna be forced to improvise you're going to have to make something up on the fly, on your feet. And that is quite a difficult thing to do. And people will often say, well, how do I best do that? What's the best way to, to get to that, sta- that stage and that state so that I can just extemporize, I can come up with ideas and concepts and it can flow, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And there's really no easy way of doing it. There's no quick trick that you can do. I mean, people will say things like, we'll say what you see and then twist it for example. So if you're talking to a girl and she's wearing a red hat, then you would start talking about the red hat and you kind of twist it around and make a joke and et cetera, et cetera. And that can help. And that's a good heuristic. That's a good thing to have in the back of your mind. For sure, that can be helpful. But like anything, until you practice it, it's, it's just an idea. It's just a, a, a theoretical construct it's not something that's real it's not something that's tangible and to make it real and to make it tangible you need to practice so what you can do is set yourself the task of extemporizing or um, improvising on random words so there's a website that i use and i use this for content quite a lot called random word generator so go to randomwordgenerator.com and it's as, it is as it says on the tin. You don't need to do anything. You just go. Um, you can type in the number of words you want generated, the word type, uh, the first letter and things like that if you want. I don't bother with any of that stuff. I just allow the thing to... All I want is one word, all types of word. I'm not really bothered what the type of word is. And you click the blue button, generate random words, and the random word will come up. So I've just generated the word strap. I've just generated now the word O. Oh, I've just generated the word response. So it will just generate random word after random word. And what you can do as an exercise is take that random word and say, right, now I'm gonna set my timer for a minute or for two minutes or even three minutes if you're feeling uh, a little bit adventurous. And I'm gonna put the video on, video recorder on on my phone. I'm gonna stand in front of my phone, sit in front of my phone, and I'm just gonna talk around that word for one minute and I'm gonna see whatever I come up with, okay? And that is an incredibly revealing exercise and it's a great way to strengthen the muscle that you need, or the muscles actually, plural, that you need in order to be effective in social situations because remember the most effective person in a social situation is the one who is able to talk without constraint who is able to speak and tell stories and be entertaining and be amusing and so on and so forth without it being difficult and if you can't do those things then it's just going to be harder for you in the social situation no matter what it is whether it's meeting somebody romantically or whether it is at a networking event where you're trying to impress potential business partners or employers or whatever. You know, you need to be able to think on your feet and talk on your feet. And as I say, how do you really do that? Well, I mean, the other way, and the, and the way that you should be pursuing anyway, 
is going out and interacting with as many people as you can. You know, you should just be throwing yourself into as many social situations as possible. Situations, I say social, I mean business as well, but situations where you have to speak to people. You want to be throwing yourself into as many of those as you can. But in order to strengthen the muscle, if you want an exercise, you can do it at home. Particularly at the moment when we are all supposedly socially isolating and we're not really interacting with people except on, online very much, then this is the ideal time to do this. You know, you, you click your random word and you say, right, I'm going to set the timer. I'm going to talk about this particular word for this length of time. Um, and then, you know, I'm going to record it and then I'm going to watch it back and I'm going to see how I did. I'm going to see how hesitant I was. I'm going to see how many times I repeated myself. I'm going to see how many of those annoying little um, are, uh, you know, type interjections that I uh, put into what I'm saying. I'm going to look at how I touch my face nervously or... I keep looking away from the camera. I can't hold eye contact with the camera very well or looking into the camera lens, I suppose, very well. I'm going to look at how I uh, angle my head to one side or the other. I'm going to notice what that sort of looks like. Does that look a bit like I'm a bit nervous? Does that look like I'm being a bit weak? Uh, and I'm going to note all these things and I'm going to see what I would like to change and then I'm going to work on changing them next time around. And if you keep doing this for long enough, you are going to see improvements in how you come across. You're not going to be perfect because it's very hard to be perfect in any sphere, but you are going to see improvements for sure. So it's a, it's a really, really worthwhile thing to do. Now, at first, it's going to be pretty painful or uncomfortable to do. Because people don't like doing this, okay? People don't like the sound of their own voice. <laughs> I mean, there's the old cliche, he loves the sound of his own voice. But most people actually don't like the sound of their own voice. Most people are, uh, you know, they, they, they find it embarrassing. They find it a bit cringe. They just don't like the sound of their own voice. They don't like the way they look on the camera. They find it embarrassing. They find it cringy, humiliating, etc. But you've got to get past that. Because you are the product, okay? Ultimately, you are the product. And the product that you're selling when you're out there socially, in whatever sphere it is, has to be as good as possible. Well, actually, let's take a step back from that. In fact, the way that you communicate, the way that you speak, and the way that you, you look as you are, you know, the way that you hold yourself, the way that you're, you move your arms and, and your, your hands while you're talking and your eye contact, all those kinds of things. Really, those things are the, are the products because they're you, but they're also the marketing tools because the more effectively you can communicate, that is your marketing, okay? So if you are somebody who's really charismatic, you're a great speech maker, and you can be very commanding in your presence when you stand in front of the crowd, then that is your marketing. And, and the better you are at those things, the better your marketing is. The more people are going to think, wow, this guy is, is something. He's got something to sell. He's got something to say, and I want to hear it. Now, you could, have, you, know, you could be more intelligent. You could have more interesting ideas. You could have better ideas. You could be superior in many ways. But if your marketing isn't as good, that is to say, if the way that you come across is not as good then people are going to be more likely to disregard what you are saying. So you need to make sure that your, the marketing side of things is on point as much as you can. And this technique is a fantastic, fantastic way of doing that. So I want to now try for you as an experiment. I will attempt to, to do this. I'll attempt to... Uh, extemporize or improvise on a word that I've generated with the random word generator for a minute, okay? So the word that I have is despise, okay? So the word despise has just come up on the random word generator and I want to speak about that for a minute. So let me just wait until I get to 
20 minutes and then I'll try and talk about the word despise for one minute. Go. Emotions are difficult to handle, difficult sometimes to contain. To despise someone is perhaps the most difficult emotion of all that we have to deal with. Because when you feel that degree of contempt, when you feel that degree of hatred for another human being, then that is firstly very difficult for you as a person to internalize and to find a way to process without becoming bitter, without becoming a hateful individual. But it's also very hard to put to one side so that you can concentrate on other things. So the very act of despising somebody else, the very act of the very emotion of contempt is one that is damaging, not only for your social relations, but also for your performance in general. Stop. Okay. So that was one minute of me improvising off the back of the word despise. Now, I'm not making any massive claims for how good or not that was, but I hope you get the idea of the kind of way that you do it. You take the word as your, your trigger, and then you just talk around it for a period of time. Maybe a minute's too short. Maybe you should do it for longer. Maybe three minutes is better. But you want to get to the point where any word that somebody throws at you, you can talk about it. You can talk around it, okay? And that's going to make you much more nimble when you're in a conversation, that's going to make you much more able to deal with the kind of unexpected things that people throw at you, particularly if you imagine like a nightclub situation when people are drunk or a party or something like that. People are drunk. People are kind of saying random things, chucking stuff at you. How do you respond? Okay. The better you get at this, the better you're going to perform in those random sorts of situations. And lower the bar for yourself as well. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be Shakespearean or Churchillian. Okay. You know, lower that damn bar. Just say what comes into your head. Talk around it. If you need to sort of elongate your words a bit or pause in order to collect your thoughts, then do that. That's absolutely fine. But just keep talking. Just keep your mouth moving and the words coming out. If you have to say something, it's better to say it more quickly and then to post-rationalize afterwards. That is to say to talk around it and sort of explain it afterwards. You need to keep the momentum going. The worst thing, of course, you can do is to dry up and not know what to say at all. Now, that happens to all of us. It happens to the best of us. But the more that you practice this stuff, the more that you're able to get around it, the more that you're able to keep the fluidity of your discourse going so that you don't have to stop. You don't have to embarrassingly stumble and falter over your words. You can just keep the thing Going And the better you're able to do that, the more impressive you will appear when you're in those social situations. So listen, appearing in front of the camera, speaking on, recording yourself speaking on tape or on, uh, in this case, you can just do it on your phone. I'm recording this on my iPhone at the moment. It's very easy to do. You can get a little dictaphone or whatever. The devices aren't difficult. It's not, it's, it's not hard to do. Making this a practice, doing this every day for a period of time. Try doing it as a 30 day challenge. Say, right, every day for 30 days, I'm going to improvise on a, a, a random topic. Whatever random word generator gives me, I'm going to improvise on that topic for two or three minutes and set the timer and just do it and see how it goes for that 30 days. And because you've recorded it, either on video or on audio or a combination of the two, you can then start to compare as you go along and see yourself getting better. Now, if I look at some of my early, earlier videos, and I'm not even talking that long ago, I'm talking like a, you know, a, year, or, <laughs> a year or so ago, um, you look at some of those early videos and they are terrible compared to uh, how I'm able to come across now. And I have no doubt that as time goes on, I will look back at the, the stuff that I'm doing now and I will say how terrible that was. Uh, because I have improved. So it's all a journey. We're all working on this. We're all improving. Some, of, some people are at a higher level than others just naturally. Well, good for them, right? You know, you start where you start and you improve as you go along. But the best time to start the process was yesterday. And the second best time to start the process is today. So 
That is your challenge. That is what I want you to work on this week. And by the way, if you want to give this a go and you want to send me your improvisations on MP3 or as a video or something like that, I'm absolutely open to that and I can give you some feedback. It's not a problem. Have a think about it. Drop me an email, Troy at realtroyfrancis.com. We can have a chat about it. You know, it's a really, really valuable exercise. It really, really will take you to the next level for sure. And this really is all about improving your charisma, improving your presence. And of course, that's what I talk about in Charisma and Dating Academy, the flagship course, which as I, as I say, closes today. So the link for that is below. The cart closes at midnight tonight. You can get onto the course for $297 right now. You get for that the 10 hours worth of lectures with me talking you through all of the material on charisma, on the bad boy archetype, on the dating marketplace, on making yourself stand out within that market, plus all of the dating technologies and tips and techniques that you need. You get all of that, plus you get the webinars, plus you get the bonuses, and so on and so forth. And the, the car closes tonight, guys, at midnight. So now is the time to take action by clicking the link below. When the course comes back again, which it probably will at some point later in the year, the price point will increase. The, price, the cost for entry will go up. So the advantage of joining now, one of the advantages of joining now, uh, is that you get it at that low price of $297. And you'll have lifetime access then to the material. Uh, if you join later, it's going to be more expensive. And the other thing is as well, we've got this period now where we're all kind of uh, still largely on lockdown or on various restrictions, but that's starting to be lifted. And so now is the time to, to really get right with this stuff, to really become upskilled with this stuff. So that when we come out of this and people start going out again and start socializing again, you are in the best possible uh, state and the best possible fitness to take full advantage of the market. So, Charisma and Dating Academy, click the link below, closes tonight, May the 4th at midnight EST. And that's it really, uh, I hope you enjoyed the podcast, I hope you got some, something value, real, real actionable tip today, I think real actionable advice, uh, it's something that certainly helped me a lot, I think it will help you as well. Uh, do subscribe to the channel, below really helps me to uh, spread the word, get new, new people on board, help more people, etc, etc. And with that, I will leave it there, but we will speak again very soon. Bye-bye.